my screen and you can see my Outlook account. Let's see here. My reminders. And here is my Outlook account. So what we're going to be looking at is the options within a new email. So I'm going to start a new email. And when this pop up, you see you've got the ribbon at the top for you to make a selection. What I'm going to focus on right now is the options tab or the options ribbon. Under options, we have a lot of things to choose from and some really handy kind of time savers and even uh, neat little things we can use in our email. One of the first thing in options is that we can change the theme. So we can change colors and design very much like you would do inside of PowerPoint. Um, we know a lot of these create uh, or take up space in an email and usually if you're sending it outside the organization it's going to get stripped out and placed as an attachment. So we're going to skip right over themes and colors and a font and go into the next section which is showing the field. If you would like to see the blind carbon copy field then you can just select that checkbox and that way you can add members to the blind carbon copy. Of course, a blind carbon copy in Outlook means that the person will receive your email, but no one else on the email chain will see that they received a copy of it. Also, if someone within the email chain hits reply all, your person in blind carbon copy does not receive the reply. That's very handy if you're sending out to a large group of people and they have a habit of hitting reply all accidentally. The very best thing to do is just put everybody in blind carbon copy so they get the original email and then if they hit reply all it only goes back to the original sender instead of the entire distribution list. If you have more than one account or if you are able to send email on behalf of someone else you want to be able to see the from field and so you just click on that button and then that'll pop up for you there at the top of the email and you can change if you have more than one account you'll be able to change and use your different email addresses. The permission button allows you to restrict who can forward the email or hit reply to. We're not going to use that today. Instead, we're going to go over into a couple of the other things. We have voting buttons. If you've ever used voting buttons in Outlook, you'll know it's a very handy tool. Voting buttons allow you to send an email to someone and then instead of them hitting reply, they only have to click their vote, whether they approve, reject, yes, no, or yes, no, maybe. Those are your pre-loaded uh, pre options, but you'd also do a custom option. In the custom option, you have voting buttons here and you can do a variety of votes. For instance, if you're going to be doing lunch for someone, um, and let's say they have an option of ham and turkey, then maybe we'll put in our options. Your votes are, can be ham, and I use a semicolon, turkey, semicolon, veggie. And now when I send out this email and ask them what type of lunch would you like, we're going to order box lunches, they can use the voting buttons in their email and select ham, turkey, or veggie. So let's try this out. Those are my voting buttons. And I'm going to send this to, I see we have a couple of people logged in. So I'm going to send them to Cynthia and Nancy. Oh, Nancy, it didn't find you. N-E-W-S-O-M. Rosemary. I wonder if that's Nancy. Not sure, so we're going to pick somebody else. So sorry. I thought this would be easy to be able to pick some of our guests today. Please select a box lunch. So I'm going to send this out. And when you ladies receive this email, I'll show you where the voting buttons are. So I sent this to myself as well. And I see Joanna had a question about is this only for Outlook on a PC. Joanna, I don't have access to Outlook on an Apple computer, but I know that Carlene Coover, our IT trainer, uh, is going to be uh, going over some of the same issues on the Apple. If you look at the Outlook option um, over the internet, if you log in from your home computer, uh, some of these things are there, but they're located in a different spot using the online version. Uh, so I'm only looking at the PC-based version, uh, the original Outlook for this training. 
So you'll see here, I have the email that I sent out, and I sent it out to two others as well. When you open it, you'll see at the top, see where it says voting? And there are my options, ham, turkey, and veggie. And if I can get our other participants who received this email, if you want to pull it open and make a vote as well, you can select ham, turkey, veggie, send a response in, and as everybody votes, I'll be receiving an email telling me what your selection is. The really cool thing about this, there's Angela has voted, Cynthia voted, and there's my vote. If I go over to my sent items and select this email to open, whoop, I select the original sent email, and if at the top it shows me see the message or see the tracking, if I say tracking, look how it gives me a count of what everyone has voted. So we have two ham and one turkey, and from this I can go make my lunch order. It's so much easier than trying to keep track of individual emails and what everybody wants and then waiting for somebody to change their mind. In this case, Outlook does it all for you. So because I can make custom messages or my custom voting buttons, uh, you know, I can do everything from ordering lunches or maybe it's a, when would you like to have the meeting and putting in days of the week that they could select. So there's a variety of things that we could use this for. Uh, the very bad thing about this, or the most difficult thing about this, is getting people to understand how to use the voting buttons. As you saw when I did it, when I received the email in my inbox, and I open it, the voting buttons are up here. Until someone realizes they're to use the voting buttons up at the top, they may not. They can just simply reply. So training our employees or training your staff to use the voting buttons is usually the largest obstacle. You probably want to put it in the body of the email message that says, please don't reply, simply use the voting buttons, and trying to get them to train themselves on how to do it. Once you have them trained, it's a beautiful tool and really does work well. So now that we've covered voting buttons, let's look at some of the other options. We're going to go open a new email. And Joanna asked if they can only pick one option. Yes, at this, uh, the way the voting buttons are set up, they get one vote and they can only pick one of them. Uh, so you might have to get creative with your voting buttons that, uh, let's say you can have a, a sandwich and a salad or sandwich and a soup or, or salad and a soup then you'll probably have to put all those combinations as different voting buttons. A little bit cumbersome, but remember, it's supposed to be simplistic. So if I go back to the Options tab in my new email, we covered voting buttons, showed you how to do custom. So let's talk a little bit about read receipts and delivery receipts. Uh, most people don't understand what these really mean. If I send an email with a delivery receipt, it means I will receive... I, sorry, if I send a delivery receipt, it means I will receive a notification when the server where I am sending the email is received by the server. So here at TCU, it doesn't really leave our server if I'm sending an email to any of you who work here. I'm sending it to your TCU email. It's on the same server as mine. However, if I'm sending it to someone outside of TCU, the moment the email hits their server, it should send me an email notification saying that the server received the email. Essentially, I have the correct extension, like ours is tcu at edu, or sorry, at tcu.edu. If I wasn't sure if I spelled it right or I got the company name wrong, it would show me a delivery receipt that yes, it did receive it, and yes, that is a valid server. The read receipt is something different. The read receipt is not that your recipient read the email. It is a receipt saying it's been read, meaning marked read. In your inbox, when you get a new email, it's unread. It's in bold. And then when you open it, it goes to read email, meaning it's no longer in bold, showing it's not a new email. There's no guarantee that someone has actually opened it and read it. This receipt indicates it's been marked as read by your recipient. It's a really handy tool to show and give you an indication that someone has opened your email. I love to do this with folks who are notorious for saying, oh, I never saw it. Well, I got a read receipt, so you at least opened it at some point. Now, this is available and you can request it. It doesn't mean that they will send the receipt. You probably have seen the option in your Outlook or maybe in your personal email that asks if you want to send a read receipt. You can mark it no, 
So although you can request it, doesn't mean that you'll actually get it. And I see Jennifer has a question, is there an option on a Mac? There is an option for read receipts and most of these things on the Mac version, and Carleen will be going over those uh, at a later time. We're doing two different trainings, one for PC and one for Mac. The other items here in options, this allows me the save sent item to. When we send an email, it should automatically get saved to our sent item folder. However, I could change it. Let's say I have a folder specifically for a project and I'm sending out an email about that project. Instead of sending it and then going into my email, finding it in the sent folder and moving it, I could just say right here, save it to another folder and name the folder I want it to go to after I send it. So just a little shortcut to help save you a step. The next option here is called delay delivery. This is a beautiful tool that works really well when it works. That is, if I would like to, de to delay the delivery of this email, let's say I'm working on a project and I'm going to be having a meeting in about 30 minutes. I want to remind everybody in 10 minutes before the meeting that they don't want to be late. However, 10 minutes before the meeting, I'm already going to be in the next building setting up for the meeting. So how do I accomplish that? I will prep this email and get it ready to send. And then I'm going to hit delay delivery. In this day, delay delivery, it says do not deliver before. And I can put today's date and then I'll default it. My meeting's at 3 o'clock. So I'm going to send this email at, say, 245. So as I close this email, uh, it will not actually leave my, my outbox until 245. Now that sounds really good. It's only 30 minutes from now. I shouldn't have a problem. However, let's say I, I tell it don't deliver before tomorrow at 2.45. I'm going to be gone tomorrow. However, I want to remind all my staff members about a meeting or some deadline. It should work. If, they, if IT sends out updates to our computers or Microsoft has an update and my computer restarts, it won't work. Your Outlook has to be open and functioning and your com you have to be logged into your computer for that option to work. Because it doesn't reside on the server, it's actually going to reside on your local PC. So if you shut down Outlook, it's not going to go anywhere until you open it again. I actually had this happen. I was going to be gone for an entire week and I had emails set to go out every day while I was gone. Well, I didn't know it, but IT sent out an update shut down my computer and nothing was logged in. So when I returned from vacation and I logged into Outlook, all my emails went uh, when I logged in seven days later. Didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. However, if I'm looking at an hour or two or even a three hour delay here, it should work with no problem. Just be aware if you're trying to send it the next day, you gotta make sure that Outlook is up and running and it's stored on your local PC. So it's not something that you'll be able to log in from your phone and be able to send. It's residing on your PC at work. So again, a good tool when it works. Another little handy thing is called direct replies to. I'm sure this has happened to you before where someone asks you to send an email or they send an email and say, uh, instead of responding to me, please respond to my assistant. Well, they don't, do they? They always hit reply and it goes back to the manager who sent it instead of the assistant. Well, this is a handy way to make them do it without knowing it. So here I am listed in have replies sent to, right here in delivery options. That's a default to whoever's mailbox we are in when we send the email. But I could also add somebody else. So I'm going to add Carlene. We're going to pretend that Carlene is my assistant. In this case, I have sent an email to everyone on the staff asking them, please let Carlene know if you are available for a meeting tomorrow. And what do they do? They hit reply. When they hit reply, they will actually be able to reply to both of us. And they don't even know it. I forced them to do that. I could even delete my name so when someone hits reply, I don't get it. It goes directly to Carlene. That may be a little dangerous if someone has an unrelated question, so it may be best to leave both names in there. But I could have it replies sent to multiple people. It, there's no real uh, 
maximum number that I could put in here. So very handy tool to use if you need to make sure that someone is directing the responses to a particular person. Now you see this dialog box that's popped up here. Uh, this pretty much covers everything at the top that we've been talking about. We have the voting buttons, the delivery receipt, the read receipt, and then have reply sent to, delay our delivery, and then here's one called expires after. If you've ever sent an email and needed a response in a timely manner, I've had people open an email well after the deadline and send me a response. Well, it's too late. What I could do instead is send an email that has an expiration on it. We're going to do 219. So this email is going to expire in one minute. I'm going to show you that when it hits my inbox, it'll come through as an email. And then as the email sits there and the time changes to 219, it should expire it. When it expires, it's going to change the way this email looks in my inbox. It's going to go dark and have a line through it. I can still open it, but it should, it's a good indication that it's no longer valid. So if I have a deadline, please respond by today at 5 o'clock. I set the email to expire at 5 o'clock, and then when someone sees it, they'll realize there's something wrong here. I need to pay attention, and it'll be very clear that they've missed the deadline. And of course, I put this for a minute out. There, my computer says it's 219. So the email should start to change color and have a line through it. This is a great thing about doing live training. You're never quite sure if it's going to work the way you think it's going to work. You have an answer for? There are, no in there are no voting buttons in Outlook for Mac. Oh, well, that's discouraging. There are also no read receipts. And there are no read receipts in Mac? <laughs> well, okay, sorry our Mac users. You don't have all those options. You can respond to a message with a read receipt, but cannot request a read receipt in a Mac. Is that Mac for Outlook? Mac for Outlook. Outlook. You cannot request a read receipt, but you can give a read receipt. Uh, and if you can vote if someone sends one, you can vote using the Mac application, but you can't create your voting button. So that's unfortunate that you don't have all of those options. And while I'm sitting here waiting for this email to expire, it's not expiring. Now, you'll notice that when I opened it, it tells me that message. This message expired on Tuesday at 219. But it did not change the look of that. But it does tell me that it has expired. So unfortunately, Microsoft does, when they do their updates, they do change a few of these things. Uh, so now we just have a simple message that the, it has expired, but it still does give us an indication for people who are missing deadlines that there was something there and they missed it. So it does, does give us a little option here. Um, that does cover everything in our properties box that we wanted to ensure you were aware of. Again, these are new emails under options, all the little different things that you can do. Maybe you might use one or two of these on occasion. I find the direct replies to extremely helpful. Uh, the delivery receipt and read receipt, again, are effective if, uh, if the person actually reads their email. Uh, and Joanna asked if any of this was on the web application. Most of this is available on the web application, but it's in a different location on the web app. And we'll take a look and post a, a quick video on where to find these on the web application. I don't have that up and running to show us just now. Uh, Joanna, thank you very much for your questions. Do we have any other questions about the options in the Outlook new mail messages? Okay, if you don't have any other questions, then I will thank you very much for joining us today. Just a reminder, we are going to be taking a break for the holidays, and so we will not be back with Tech Tuesday until January 10th. 
And in January, Carlene's going to kick it off with a, a little tutorial on using headers and footers in Microsoft Word. Two weeks later, we're going to be covering subtotals in Excel. So I wish you a very happy holiday season, and we will see you in January. Thank you so much for joining us today on Tech Tuesday.